Okay, let's talk about something else today. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. This is Mani Karthik here. In this episode, we're gonna talk about which is the best SEO tool out there. Let's see. Cool, so SEO tool, plenty of them, right? Everything from SEMrush, Ahrefs, Ranks, BrightEdge, SEO Clarity, many, 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 many SEO tools out there. So which one should you choose from? Uh, see, as a person who's been using many of these tools for the last 10, 15 years in my career as SEO and you know marketing specialist, one of the things that I've found is that your success doesn't really depend on the tool you're using. Uh, your success depends on your strategy, on your action, or how much fears you are, how much do you stick to your goals, and how long you stay in the ring. Many people, when they start out, they think that it's all about the tool. So let's say, for example, if you use a fancy tool or a more expensive tool, you get access to a lot more data, and obviously that makes you better than anyone else out there, which is kind of true uh, in the technical sense of it. But, but in my experience, it doesn't really translate to success. And I've seen people who have been extremely successful by just using hacks, like you know, doing things on their own without even doing or buying tools. So let's just get the idea out of your mind that a tool will actually make you successful. A tool is just a tool. It gives you access to certain information which you might not be getting to otherwise. And it all depends on how much you use that information. So that's the first thing I want to kind of just put it out there on the table before getting into which is the best tool out there, right? Cool. So when it comes to the best SEO tool, obviously there are the most popular ones like uh, SEMrush, Ahrefs, Ranks.io, uh, Link Assistant, Moss, SEO Clarity, BrightEdge, all of these different tools you can think of. And each of them have their own pluses and minuses. But if I were to take a step back, let's think about where do they get this SEO data from. So mostly it's from Google and other third party services. So the data, the underlying data for many of these tools are pretty much the same. And what actually makes a difference is how they present it or how this data is being presented to you on these tools. So whether they have a cohort, whether they have a, a graph to it, whether they have a historical performance data and all these different things, right? But the data essentially is pretty much the same. I wouldn't say exactly the same, but pretty much the same. Uh, and it's not accurate as well. Like for example, if you go to the leading SEO tools today and search for COVID vaccine related trends, you will see that they have very little data because it's a very recent trend. So you would need at least a few more months to actually get the real data. So there's a little bit of a lag, there's a little bit of inaccuracy. So you need to consider these things when you look at these SEO tools and not think that whatever SEO data or whatever data is being presented to you through these tools are accurate and written on stone. Another example is if you look at the search volumes on many of these keywords, you will see that the numbers are pretty much rounded up. Like red apples is being searched for 15,000, like 15,000 people search for this particular keyword. It's not true. It's very much indicative, but it's not accurate. So just take it with a pinch of salt. That's all I'm saying. Cool. So the other thing is one of the main reasons we, we all use SEO tools is for rank tracking, which is to see how we are performing or how our websites are performing on Google, Yahoo, Bing, and other search engines. I think the best tool that does this is Ranks.io. And I'm biased here because I work with them for their you know, marketing efforts, but I think, so Ranks.io is an excellent tool that does just that, which it tells you how you're performing over a period of time for a particular keyword. So if you sign up on Ranks and you give your keywords that you're tracking yourself for, let's say five or 10 or whatever that number is, and punch in the, the website that you're tracking this keywords against, it'll tell you, uh, where you are positioned today, tomorrow, every week, every month, and it'll send you reports as much as you want it, like, you know, weekly basis, daily basis, even monthly basis. So that's a great way to just stay on top of your performance overall. Every other tool does this in different ways. Like for example, SEMrush and Hrefs also does this. But then what I've seen is that many people buy these tools just for the sake of it, uh, without actually finding value in these tools. And that's something I, I'm, I'm so disappointed with, with people, right? Because you know, you're spending $990 every month to use an SEO tool while actually using only 25 to 30% of the, the entire feature set. You know, you might be looking at your, your rank performance, you might be looking at your backlinks, uh, but nothing beyond that. Maybe a little bit of competition research and everything, but then I'm not seeing many people using the entire feature set of a tool, uh, really. And that's a that's a disappointment. Uh, but there's no other go. Everyone follows the trend and every other tool out there have their 
plans built in such a way that they squeeze the most out of you. So it's either a you know ninety nine dollar plan or a five ninety nine or a six ninety nine or a nine ninety nine. Whatever the case is, there's always some spillover in terms of what you use and what you don't use. So that's that. Another thing that you have to keep in mind while choosing. Uh, a good SEO tool is how flexible it is. Like for example, today you might have five keywords to track, tomorrow you might have 20 keywords, another year from now you might have, I don't know, 100 keywords. So how flexible the tool is, is also something that you have to consider because you don't wanna to switch tools in between, right? Like trying one tool for three months or six months and then switching to another tool may not be the best of experience. So don't, don't do that, try to avoid that and keep scale in mind when you choose a tool. Uh, another thing you have to keep in mind is the support system. So many tools out there are great in terms of features, but they don't have a support system as in like if you search for something that's not working on the tool, you may not find the answers. So if you have a good support system, a lot of user base that always helps. I found that SEMrush is a great example for this or even Ahrefs is a great example for it. You will find that a lot of people are you know, reviewing the tools, a lot of people are giving tutorials, not just official ones, even unofficial ones, tips, tricks and everything. So that really helps because you may not get stuck at some point of time trying to accomplish something that you're not familiar with on these tools. So think about that as well when you choose an SEO tool. Another very, very important thing that I look into when choosing a tool is the data source. Like for example, can I get keyword data from the US, uh, in India, Europe, Southeast Asia? If you can provide me data from these different places, it gives me access to more information that is that could be valuable to me as opposed to just one source of data. And I think many tools do this today, like they have different sources of data. Like, you know, you can choose the different flags on SEMrush and it'll show you the accurate SEM uh, data, like for example, the keyword data or the PPC data from those uh, regions. And that's really, really useful. And especially in today's world where you're talking about multi-channel attributions and different platforms and everything, this really helps. Uh, another one thing that I also look into is the desktop versus mobile data. So today you have a search volume for mobile, you have a search volume for desktop, and it's very, very different. So having said that, the best SEO tool, so to speak, that I would recommend you is ranks.io and SEMrush. Ranks.io because I'm involved with the project I have with the marketing and I love the tool. It's a beautifully designed tool. It does certain things, but in an excellent way. Like it gives you rank tracking performance, but in a beautiful chart that I haven't seen uh, done with any other tools out there. So I think it's really good. The kind of passion, the kind of investment the, the folks behind it have done is amazing. So I love that. So I would recommend ranks.io for rank tracking. I would recommend SEMrush for everything else. Like for example, looking at the backlinks of your competitors or uh, looking at uh, you know how you are stacking up with your competition, your content, your SEO, technical stuff and everything. I think SEMrush does a good job. So does Ahrefs, but I like SEMrush because I've been using it for a while and uh, they're very responsive. The support community is very good. Ahrefs is great with the features and everything, but the support community, Mm, uh, well, I'm not so convinced. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people who prefers Edge Ruffs, nothing wrong about it. Just that my experience is you know, slightly different. I could be biased, but that's just it. So I think SEMrush and Ranks is a great combination. You can use SEMrush for you know, advanced stuff and you can do Ranks for the basic stuff. Plus what I'm hearing from the team at Ranks is that they're building a, a better tool. So there are a lot of things that's coming up. So that's something that I wanna look, look forward to. So once that's out there, I think there's it's gonna be even more better, even more cooler. So look forward to that. But I think SEMrush is a great, uh, overall a great SEO tool in my opinion. All right, so that's it for today. I hope we can talk in another video. If you have any questions, do send it my way, either in comments or in the email I just mentioned. I would love to take them on and answer you through my videos. This is Mani Karthik, signing off.